Hi, I'm going to talk about my favorite topic, macro and composition. Macro opens up a whole new world within an amazing, unique underwater world. We can capture amazing details of one subject and emphasize exactly what we want to show. It's easier and simpler than other types of photography. Remember though, it's more about the photographer than the equipment. The equipment is secondary. And it's not so much the skill of the photographer, it's more like patience, persistence, creativity, and sometimes dumb luck, all right? With macro, we can be different. Instead of showing conventional, boring fish ID shots, we can let our imagination run wild as to what specific detail we want to capture, and the angle from what we want to capture it, and how we frame it in our picture. One little tiny thing can all of a sudden reveal all kinds of detail and beauty, okay? Now, two things I want to highlight, the background and the foreground. That's all we have in macro. All right, look at my previous video, check it out on how to do it technically. Break it down, we have a low ISO, a fast shutter speed, our, set our strobes on TTL. Assuming we can get close and um, approach the subject uh, and focus on something, we can get a technically good image. Now we're left with three things, more related to composition, okay? One, aperture. We have limited depth of field with macro, but we can open up our aperture and even make our depth of field more shallow. Okay, we can use depth of field and blur artistically to highlight just what we want to show. Strobe position and angle. All right, now sometimes we use our strobes to eliminate a background or to, um, you know, to do different things, but we can position our strobes to highlight shadows or texture if we want. And three, the distance from the subject, the angle approach to the subject, and the framing of the subject. These are all related to composition. Now, things to emphasize with composition and macro. First of all, the background. If it's interesting, colorful, or even non-distracting, like an open blue water or a black background, great. Leave it in. You can keep your, your aperture small to maximize whatever depth, whatever depth of field you want, okay? Many excellent photographers don't even like and won't even try to take a macro image unless they can find a good background. But we, if, what if you have a bad background? We have ways of dealing with that, okay? One, we can change it. We can wait for the subject to move or the background to change. Now, that's not too practical, but we can also change it by repositioning ourselves. Sometimes if we can get low, we can show a op more open water column. This isn't always possible, however, if the subject is like on a muck dive in the sand in, in, on, the, on the bottom, on the seafloor. Another thing we can do, we can eliminate the background. We can get so close to the subject that there is no background. The subject fills the background. A third thing we can do, we can blur the background, okay? We can open up our aperture, the background's still there. It's so blurred you don't even notice it. A fourth thing we can do is darken it or render it less visible by positioning our strobes. Aim the strobe sort of at our camera so the cone of light catches the subject but not the distracting background, all right? So, let's talk a little bit more now about composition with regard to the subject, okay? Well, it's where you're going to position the frame, and that's the good old rule of thirds, which I'll show you some examples on. In general, there's always exceptions, but we don't want to position it dead center. Also, the orientation of the subject, that depends on our angle of approach, all right? How we tilt the camera, we can emphasize a diagonal, a unique, an unusual viewpoint. Also, we can use, we, we have to get something tack sharp, but we can use our aperture to emphasize, uh, our aperture and our exact plane of focus to emphasize exactly what we want to highlight. I like to use um, uh, autofocus, but then I will lock my focus and rock back and forth to achieve the exact plane of focus I want. And then sometimes I'll experiment with different focus planes too. Now strobes we use um, to get the right sort of, um, you know, eliminate the background, eliminate backscatter, so that's part of the strobe positioning, but we can also position our strobes depending on what we want to emphasize. If I want to emphasize color or pattern, I'll use two strobes or one strobe with a diffuser straight on. But if I want to emphasize texture or shadows, I'll use one strobe or turn one strobe off and then have the strobe at an acute angle to emphasize this, pat this uh, texture, okay, or shadows. Nothing to shoot? I doubt it. With abstract, with, uh, with macro, we can shoot abstract. We can take something boring and make it stunning or beautiful. We can look at a fish fin scale or eye. We can find beautiful patterns in corals, sea fans, sea urchins, sea cucumbers. Remember, macro is technically easier. There are fewer variables to work with, okay? Um, and uh, it's not about 
the equipment. It's about the photographer, the skill, but mostly the patience and uh, some of the creativity. And the next video, I'm going to show some examples of composition with macro. Uh, thanks so much for your attention.